everyone, my name is Sarah and I teach a comparative anatomy lab. This video is meant to be a general overview of the urogenital system. So let's go ahead and let's get started. So the urogenital system, what is it? Well, it's also called the genitourinary system because it includes both the reproductive and excretory organs. This is due to the fact that they tend to share common ducts such as the mesonephric duct or the urethra. Now the urinary portion of the urogenital system involves the removal of waste products via osmoregulation and excretion. And of course the genital portion of the urogenital system involves the male and female reproductive tracts. We're gonna begin by looking at the excretory system, which of course all begins at the kidney. The kidney functions in salt and water balance. It has two parts, the cortex and the medulla. And of course, the end product of what's occurring in the kidney is the substance known as urine. So let's talk about urine formation. Inside the kidney are what are filtering units known as nephrons, of course these filter blood. The glomerulus is the filter and then there are also these collecting tubules for collecting the urine. Both of these are located in the cortex. The glomerulus is going to receive blood coming from the renal artery and it's going to allow waste products to pass through but it's going to hinder the passage of these blood cells so blood is going to leave via the renal pelvis it's also going to hinder the passage of larger proteins now the filtrate that the glomerulus has just created is going to in addition to contain waste it's also going to contain glucose and amino acids and small proteins that made it through the passage to the glomerulus into the filtrate. So we actually have to reabsorb these nutrients that our body does need. So the next portion of urine formation is reabsorbing these nutrients. All right, so now reabsorption is gonna be taking place. This occurs in the loop of Henle, which is located in the kidney's medulla. The result of this reabsorption and filtering of the substance is gonna be urine, and that urine is collected in the collecting tubules. The urine is then released through the renal pelvis into the ureter. Now the ureter is just a duct system that carries the urine from the kidney to the urinary bladder. The urinary bladder is musculature that collects and stores the urine. It contains, in essence, smooth musculature that's gonna control the passage of the urine to the urethra. And the urethra is going to be where the the waste is expelled from the body. All right, so now we're gonna move into the genital systems, beginning with the male reproductive system. So beginning with the male gonad, also known as the testes, the testes begin in the abdominal cavity. And what happens is this tissue called a gubernaculum connects to the testes and it pulls them through the abdominal cavity and they descend into the scrotal sac. Now inside the testes is sperm, and that's the male reproductive cell. There are also Leydig cells that are producing and secreting testosterone and Sertoli cells that are nourishing these developing sperm. So sperm are produced in the testes. So let's quickly talk about sperm. Once again, it is the male reproductive cell and is sometimes called a spermatozoan. It is produced in the testes via spermatogenesis. At the end product of spermatogenesis is a haploid cell. This is the sperm cell, and haploid just means that it's carrying one set of chromosomes. So if a total set of chromosomes, a diploid set in humans is 46, a sperm is carrying half that, is carrying 23 chromosomes. So it is a haploid cell, and it also achieves locomotion via a flagella. So now that the sperm have been produced in the testes and have been nourished by the Sertoli cells, Sperm gets stored in the epididymis, and what the epididymis does is it delays the release of the sperm to give them time to mature. So sperm are maturing in the epididymis. Now, the next portion of the male reproductive system is the vas deferens. This is the duct that carries the sperm from the epididymis to be ejaculated through the ejaculatory duct. Some sperm storage can occur in the vas deferens, but in general, the vas deferens is moving the sperm via peristalsis, which is just rhythmic muscle contractions. It's moving the sperm to the ejaculatory duct to be released from the body. 
Now, there are several accessory organs of the male reproductive system that all serve a purpose of neutralizing the acidity of the vagina, one of which is the seminal vesicles. The seminal vesicles store and produce semen. The sperm is eventually going to get carried through the urethra. It's going to be encapsulated in the semen and then ejaculated from the penis. So let's quickly talk about semen. Semen functions in sperm suspension. It is made from fluids that are released from the seminal vesicles as well as the prostate and the bulbourethral glands. Semen is rich in sugar, mostly fructose, and it's also uh, rich in dihydrotestosterone. Now the bulbourethral gland is going to provide a lubricant. And so the whole function of the semen, in addition to sperm suspension, is that semen has an alkaline pH that neutralizes the acidity of the vagina to ensure sperm survival. And in fact, the sperm won't be able to move without the semen, so the semen is very important. All right, moving on to the female reproductive tract. The female gonad is the ovary. This is where the eggs, or the ova, are produced. So females, we are born with all the eggs that we are ever going to produce. This begins in utero. Those primordial follicles in the ovary, they get suspended in prophase one until puberty, at which time they continue meiosis. As to which egg continues and completes meiosis is random. Now oogenesis, which is the process of making the ova, produces only one egg at a time. So one germ cell equals one egg, and these eggs are haploid. Spermatogenesis produces four sperm cells for every one germ cell. And so that is a big deal. And so that is why producing sperm is way less energy consuming than producing an ova. And so if you're thinking about why males tend to be just a little more promiscuous than females, it is because males can afford to. As a female, we actually cannot. We have to think about who is going to fertilize our egg. That's just a little bit of evolutionary talk for you guys. So let's talk about ovulation. Ovulation is the rupturing of the follicle where it is released into the fallopian tube. Now just a quick note, the ovary is not actually physically touching the fallopian tube. They are not connected. The egg gets ruptured from the ovary and the fallopian tube has what are called fimbrae located on the ostium or the opening to the fallopian tube that catches the egg and pulls it up. Now the fallopian tube is going to carry the egg to the uterus. Fertilization takes place in the fallopian tube and when it becomes fertilized, if it becomes fertilized, the ovum will travel to the uterus. So let's just quickly touch upon menstruation. It is the shedding of the uterine epithelial lining, and this occurs if fertilization does not take place. So once the ova has been ovulated and is now in the fallopian tube, there is a follicle, the graphene follicle that the egg has erupted from. That follicle remains in the ovary, and it becomes what is called a corpus luteum that produces progesterone and estrogen. And progesterone has a very important job in that it tells the body do not ovulate again because obviously you do not want to ovulate when you are already pregnant. So the function of the corpus luteum is to produce this hormone to tell the body not to ovulate again. So if the ova becomes fertilized, the corpus luteum will continue to produce progesterone. If the ova does not become fertilized, the luteum will stop producing progesterone. It's going to degenerate and become what's known as a corpus albicans. And so if you're interested in this process and you want to little, learn a little bit more uh, regarding this process of either fertilization or menstruation or just the female reproductive cycle in general, I do have a video that details purely the female reproductive cycle in great detail, but it is a fairly interesting process. Now, if menstruation doesn't occur, that means fertilization takes place. Conception occurs when the embryo has been fertilized. And once the egg has been fertilized, it implants in the uterus. So the fertilized egg begins developing in the uterus as a zygote. Now during pregnancy, 
the uterus is going to begin enlarging to accommodate the developing fetus. And thus the uterus is going to go from about 2.5 ounces to 2 pounds. And when we talk about the uterus, we are talking about the womb. And so if you've ever seen a pregnant cat um, during a particular dissection and uh, contrasted that with an, a non-pregnant cat, you will see that even the fallopian tube enlarges as well as the uterus, and it's a drastic difference. So that is just a quick overview of the urogenital system. If you're interested in the reproductive systems, I do have videos that detail them. And we go through more, more of those systems that are just really interesting to me. But I really do hope this helps you. And we'll see you next time.